Hey kids, what is your favorite thing to eat for breakfast? Do you like scrambled eggs? Or maybe pancakes? Or, I don't know, maybe Cheerios? Are they your favorite? In today's story, we're going to hear about a time that Jesus made breakfast for his friends. What do you think he fixed for them? We're going to find out about it in a minute. denied that he was a follower of Jesus three different times. He was probably afraid that he might be captured like Jesus was. So he told the people he had no idea who Jesus was. Jesus had told Peter this would happen. Even though Peter said he would never turn his back on Jesus, he did, just as Jesus predicted. Peter's heart was broken. He was so excited that Jesus had risen from the dead he hadn't gotten a chance to talk to Jesus about what happened yet. Have you ever done something wrong, like disobey your parents? Maybe they knew about it and you knew you'd be in trouble, but they hadn't talked to you about it yet? Well, that's where Peter finds himself in our story today. One day, Peter said, I'm going out to fish. Thomas, Nathaniel, James, and John, and two other disciples decided to go along with him. They all went to the Sea of Galilee and they got into a boat. The way fishermen would fish was to put their nets into the water and then pull them up to see if there was any fish inside. People liked to fish at night because lots of fish would come to the surface of the water and the fishermen could catch them. So let's all fish together. Everyone throw your nets into the water and then pull them up. Did you catch anything? It was a lot of work to keep throwing and pulling all night. Usually that worked out pretty well for the disciples and they caught lots of fish, but not this time. Peter and John and the others, they fished all night and they didn't catch any fish. They tried throwing their nets over here. They tried throwing their nets over there. They just couldn't catch any fish. Early in the morning, when they were almost done. They looked up and they saw someone on the beach. The man yelled and asked them if they had caught any fish. And when they said no, the man yelled again, throw your nets on the right side of the boat and you will find some fish. The disciples probably wondered about that. After all, they had been throwing their nets on both sides all night and they hadn't caught anything yet. Why should they do it again? Finally, they decided to give it a try and they cast their nets off on the right side of the boat. And when they started to pull the net up, they saw there were fish in it. There were lots of fish in the net. In fact, there were so many fish that the seven disciples couldn't even lift the net into the boat. It was so full of fish. They decided to head for shore and pull the net beside the boat. Then John looked back at the beach again. They took a closer look at the man standing there. Wait a minute, that man looked familiar. It was Jesus. When John told everyone, Peter got so excited. He really wanted to see Jesus again. So he jumped into the water. Peter made his way to the shore while the others followed with the boat and the net full of fish. When Peter and the other disciples got to shore, they saw that Jesus had a fire going 
and he had some fish already cooking. Bring some of that fish that you caught and we'll eat those too, Jesus said. We'll eat breakfast on the beach. Peter and the others brought some of their fish. There were plenty left because they had caught 153 big fish. Jesus fed the disciples a big breakfast of fish and bread. What do you think? Would you like to eat fish for breakfast? <laughs> While they were eating the breakfast, Peter was probably thinking back to another time when they had all eaten together. Peter loved Jesus, but he had done something he was so sorry for. A few weeks ago, before Jesus had been crucified, Jesus and the disciples had been eating the Last Supper together. Peter told Jesus that he would be willing to die for him. Then, when Jesus was arrested, Peter got scared. He didn't die for Jesus. He had not been brave at all. He told people he didn't even know Jesus. He denied that he knew Jesus three different times. Peter wondered if Jesus could ever forgive him. Well, after breakfast, Jesus asked Peter a question. He said, Peter, do you really love me? Peter answered, you know that I love you, Lord. Then Jesus said, feed my lambs. Then Jesus asked him again, Peter, do you really love me? And Peter answered again, you know I love you, Lord. Take care of my sheep, Jesus told him. Finally, Jesus asked again, Peter, do you love me? Peter was kind of hurt that Jesus kept asking him that. But asking him that question three times had reminded him of the three times that he had denied Jesus. Peter said, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Peter, feed my sheep, Jesus said. Jesus was giving Peter something to do for him. Jesus gave Peter a mission to take care of Jesus' followers everywhere. Jesus wanted Peter to know that he was forgiven and chosen to do something special for God.
memory verse together. Romans 10, 9. If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Good job. Let's say it again. And this time, I'm going to be quiet for parts of it, but you keep saying it, okay? Romans, if you, that Jesus and believe that God, you will be saved. Great. Asante, do you have your hat? Mom called. I think so, Asante responded. A few minutes later, Mom called out the same question. I thought I told her yes, he thought as he answered again. As he headed through the door, Mom asked Asante if he had his hat once again. Trying not to let his impatience show, he once again told her that he had it. Has someone asked you the same question over and over? They may have been trying to show the importance of what they were asking. In this story, Jesus asked Peter the same question three times. Peter was restless. I'm going fishing, he told the other disciples. At least fishing was doing something. It had been a while since Jesus had been crucified. He had appeared to them twice since his resurrection. It had been wonderful to see him and to know that he was alive. Jesus hadn't mentioned that Peter had denied him three times. Peter was still so embarrassed. He was ashamed of what he had done. He may have asked God to forgive him. He may have thought that Jesus would no longer trust him. How much did the other disciples know about it? He may have wondered. Did they know how sorry he was? Some of the other disciples decided to go fishing with Peter. So just as the sun was going down, they stepped into Peter's boat. The wind soon swept across the water. They stayed out all night, but they caught nothing. What a waste of a night's work, Peter probably thought. Early in the morning, just as the sun was coming up, they returned to shore without any fish. As their boat drew closer to shore, they noticed a man standing on the beach. The man called out, Have you caught any fish? The disciples called back, No, none at all. The man called out again, Throw your net on the right side of the boat. You'll find some. Perhaps they just wanted to please the man. Perhaps they wanted to try once more. Whatever the reason, they did what the man said. Immediately, their nets were full of fish. They couldn't even haul their nets into the boat. Suddenly, John recognized the man and called to Peter. It is the Lord! Peter was very happy to see Jesus again. Jesus was waiting for them. The boat was so very close to shore that Peter decided not to wait. He jumped out of the boat and hurried through the water to Jesus. The others followed in the boat. When they reached the shore, they found that Jesus had made a fire. He was cooking fish for their breakfast. They soon enjoyed fish and some bread. After breakfast, Jesus turned to Peter. Do you truly love me more than these? He asked. Peter immediately answered, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus looked into Peter's eyes and said quietly, Feed my lambs. Again, Jesus asked, Peter, do you truly love me? And again, Peter replied, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus replied, Take care of my sheep. A third time, Jesus asked Peter, Peter, do you love me? Peter didn't know what to think. Perhaps he wondered if Jesus didn't believe him. And why did Jesus ask three times? Was it because Peter denied Jesus three times? 
Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him three times. With a heavy heart, Peter answered, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said again, Take care of my sheep. Finally, Jesus said to Peter, Follow me. Peter realized then Jesus had forgiven him. Jesus still wanted Peter to follow him. Why did Jesus ask Peter these questions in front of the other disciples? Perhaps it was so that they would know that he had forgiven Peter. Jesus also wanted to teach Peter a lesson in patience, sympathy, and forgiveness. Peter would need all of that in the future. He had a work to do for Jesus. He would lead and care for many new believers of Jesus during the rest of his life. Jesus also wants us to know something special. There is only one thing we must do to follow and serve Him. Love Him with all our hearts. And when we really do, we will want to take care. Hey, yo, Chicken Nuggets. It's me, Carl. And I'm Vanessa. Welcome to Groo TV. Welcome to Groo TV. Hosted by where we have fun with our friends, talk about Jesus, and go over everything the Bible has to offer. Now once again, welcome to Pro TV! Carl. Psst, Carl. Are you going to start? What? Oh, yeah, sure. Hey kids, uh, today we're gonna um, count our fingers. Count our fingers? Yeah. Don't you think we might wanna play a game? Okay, we can play a game. We can play, who can count their fingers the slowest? One. All right, Carl, that's it. Head up. I don't wanna. Come on, get up. Come on, get up. Did that hurt? No. Okay, yes. Come on, Carl. These kids want to know what's wrong. No, they don't. No one does. After what I did, no way. Wait, what did you do? Something horrible. Just awful. Listen, no matter what you did, you can always tell me. Come on, we're friends, Carl. I don't know. Do you promise you won't tell no one? I promise. Okay. Well, my good friend Andy invited me to go camping with him last week, and he really wanted me there. That sounds fun. Kind of like what we're doing now. It's going to be super fun, but when it came to the day, I decided to change my mind and not go. Why did you not want to go? I guess I just felt like staying home and playing video games. Oh, I get that. It's not a big deal. At least you told him you didn't feel like going. You did tell him you weren't going anymore. Oh, Carl. I told Andy I hate camping. But you love camping. I know. It's a terrible thing to do. I feel awful. No, he'll never forgive me. I also lied, and that's a sin. Now God is upset with me. Well, Carl, I think you'd be surprised. Surprised at how mad they are? Oh, great. No, no, well, just like Peter was surprised, I'm sure that you would be too. Peter? Peter, the teacher of the high school that smells like a pineapple? No, Peter in the Bible, the disciple. Oh yeah, what about him? Well, you remember last week's story, right? Sure, we talked about how Jesus overcame death. He died for our sins and then three days later he rose back up to life. Yep, but you do remember what happened before that story, right? I can't. Well, after Jesus was arrested, all the disciples scattered because they were scared of being arrested for being a follower of Jesus. One time, there were people coming up to Peter accusing him of knowing Jesus. But each time he was asked, he said he didn't know Jesus. What? He's lying. He knows Jesus. He was a disciple for crying out loud. He was Jesus' friend. I know he lied three times and denied Jesus by doing it. He really did something really bad. Oh, I know what that feels like. So after Jesus had died, Peter returned to fishing. Oh, he went back to his old job. He must have been down in the dumps, huh? Probably. I mean, he spends years with Jesus and begins to truly depend on him. And bam! He ruins his relationship with his friend and his teacher by turning his back on him not once, not twice, but thrice! Yeah, it certainly had an effect on him. So while they were fishing, a man walked out on the shore and realized they were not catching anything. He called out to them and told them to cast their net on the other side of the boat. They listened and then bam! They caught so much fish that they couldn't even pull the net up. <laughs> oh, 
was her lucky day. Thank goodness that guy helped him out. That sounds exactly like something Jesus would do. Wait, you're telling me that was Jesus? Of course, it wasn't just some random guy, it was Jesus. What, he was raised from the dead then you decided to go help out the disciples? How awesome. Did they recognize him? They did. They were so happy to see him, but Peter was so ready to see him, he couldn't wait. He took off his cloak and jumped in the water and got to Jesus as fast as he could. But I bet Jesus wasn't as happy to see Peter after the whole, I don't know Jesus thing. That's what you think, but nope. Jesus sat down and talked to Peter and it was a surprising talk. Surprising how? Well, after they got done eating, Jesus asked Peter a question three times. Jesus asked if Peter loved him and three times Peter said yes. Then what did Jesus say? He told Peter to feed his sheep. I wasn't aware Jesus was an owner of sheep. When did he get into sheep farming? <laughs> no, Jesus meant for if Peter loved him that he should take care of all of God's children and do what Jesus had taught him to do. Huh, that makes a whole lot more sense than Jesus owning livestock. But what doesn't make sense is how Jesus forgave Peter after all he did. No, it doesn't make sense, but that's what's amazing about Jesus. He does things that go against what we think is normal. His love and forgiveness goes beyond anything we could ever understand. That is awesome, and super refreshing to hear. Why do you say that? Well, if Jesus can forgive Peter for all he did, then I'm pretty sure Jesus can forgive me for what I did by kind of lying and not going on Andy's camping trip. I think you're right, Carl, and I think Andy will understand if you explain what happened. Jesus shared with Peter that he loved him and had big plans for him despite his mistakes. Wow, not only does he offer love and forgiveness, but Jesus gives encouragement. Carl, that's our big idea. Yes. Today's big idea is Jesus gives encouragement. So let's say it out loud on the count of three. One, two, three. Jesus, Jesus gives, gives encouragement. encouragement. Yeah. <laughs> Way to go, everyone. Woo. So are you going to be OK, Carl? Yeah, I think so. Carl, I thought you said you hated camping. Andy, <laughs> I don't, but I really kind of just wanted to stay home last week. So you lied to me? Yes. It's OK, I forgive you. I'm sorry, Andy. Don't, I'm sorry. Don't cry. I'm going to cry if you cry. If you cry, then I'm, I'm going to start crying. I'm already crying. I don't know. I'm, so, I'm, so, I'm, so, I'm so sorry, Andy. Guys, let's, let's, let's try to keep it together. Andy! I'm so glad we're friends. <laughs> <laughs> All right, kids. Oh. I'll see you next week. I'm terrible. <laughs> I'm a bad friend. Thank you for watching, and tune in next week for a new episode of Thanks for being with me today. Have a great week, kids. Bye.